Hello everybody and welcome to my e-lesson. This is a video on self-improvement and I, I will be covering 16 ways to become awesome in life. The first one is the 80-20 rule. This is one of the best ways to make better use of your time. The 80-20 rule, also known as the Pareto Principle, basically says that 80% of your value you will receive will come from 20% of your activities. So a lot of what you do is probably not as useful or even necessary to do as you may think. So you can just drop or vastly decrease the time you spend on a whole bunch of things. And if you do that, you will have more time and energy to spend on those things that really bring your value, happiness, fulfillment and so on. So identify those things that would give the most results to you, the 80% of results that you're looking for. Identify them. Parkinson's law. Awesome thing to know. Well, you can do things quicker than you think. This law says that a task will expand in time and seeming complexity depending on the time you set aside for it. For, it. for instance, if you say to yourself that you will come up with a solution within a week, then the problem will seem to grow up, grow, then the problem will seem to grow more difficult and you'll spend more and more time trying to come up with a solution. So focus your time on finding solutions. Then just give yourself an hour instead of the whole day or the day instead of the whole week to solve the problem. This will force your mind to focus on solutions and action. This will help you to get things done faster to improve your ability to focus and give you more free time where you can totally focus on what is in front of you instead of having some looming task creating stress in the back of your mind. This is one thing my friends which actually beats procrastination to the hell. Practice it. It really works. I have tried it personally. It does work. Batching or something. Boring or routine tasks can create a lot of procrastination and low level anxiety. One good way to get these things done quickly is to batch them. This means that you can do them all in a row. You will be able to do them quicker because there is less startup time compared to if you spread them out. And when you are batching, you become fully engaged in that task and more focused. A batch of things to do in an hour today may look like this. Clean your desk, answer today's emails, do the dishes, make three calls, write a grocery shopping list for tomorrow. Get, first, give value, then get value. This is a counterintuitive thing. There is often an idea that someone should give us something or do something for us before we give back. The problem is just that a lot of people think that way. And so far less than possible and so far less than possible is given either way. If you want to increase the value you receive, let it be money, love, kindness, opportunity, anything. You have to increase the value you give. Because over time, you pretty much get what you give. It would perhaps be nice to get something for nothing, but that seldom happens, my friend. So let's start giving value and then we will get more value. Be proactive, not reactive. This one ties into the last point that we just discussed. If someone is reactive, then very little. If everyone is reactive, then very little will get done. You could sit and wait and hope for someone else to do something. And that happens pretty often, but it takes a lot of time before it happens. A more useful and beneficial way is to be proactive, to simply be the one to take the first practical action and get the ball rolling. 
This not only saves you a lot of waiting, but is also more pleasurable since you feel like you have the power over your life. Instead of feeling like you are run by a bunch of random outside forces. So take hold of your life, my friend. Be proactive. Mistakes and failures are good. Success in life often comes from not giving up despite mistakes and failures. It comes from being persistent. When you first learn to ride your bike, you may fall over and over. Bruise a knee, cry a bit. But you get up, brush yourself off, get on the saddle again. And eventually you learn how to ride a bike. That's how it happened, right? If you can just reconnect to your five-year-old self and do things that way, instead of giving up after a try, failure or two as grown-ups often do, you would probably experience a lot more interesting things, learn valuable lessons and have quite a bit more success. Think about it. Don't beat yourself up. Why do people give up after just few mistakes or failures? Well, I think one big reason is because they beat themselves up way too much. But it's a kind, kind of pointless habit. It only creates additional and unnecessary pain inside you and wastes your precious time. It's best to try to drop this habit as much as you can. Assume wrap up. Meeting new people is fun, but it can also induce nervousness. It does. We all want to make a good first impression and not get stuck in an awkward conversation. The best way to do this that I've found so far is to assume rapport. This means that you simply pretend that you are meeting one of your best friends. Then you start the interaction in that frame of mind instead of the nervous one. Try it out. It works. <laughs> you use your reticular activation system to your advantage. I learned about the organs and the inner working of the body in class, but nobody told me about the reticular activation system. And that's a shame because it is one of the most powerful things that you can learn about. What this focus system, this RAS in your mind does is to allow you to see in your surrounding what you focus your thoughts on. It's pretty much always helps you to find what you're looking for. Means, so you really need to focus on what you want, not on what you don't want and keep that focus steady. Imagine you're trying to search for a specific person in a crowded airport terminal. What would you do? Look at people who are not the person you are you're finding or try to find the person who is amongst those people. That is what is reticular activation system. Your attitude changes your reality. When you change your attitude, you change what you focus on and all things in your world can now be seen in a different light. Do what successful people do and you will be a success. Do not do what failures do and you will not be a failure. I would say do what successful people do and you will be a success. That's the line to follow. Gratitude is a simple way to make yourself feel happy. Feeling grateful about things for a minute or two is a great way to turn a negative mood into a happy one. It is also a good tool for keeping your attitude up and focusing on the right things and to make other people happy, which tends to make you even happier since emotions are contagious. Don't compare yourself to others. The ego wants to compare. It wants to find reason for you to feel good about yourself. I got a new bike. But by doing that, it also becomes very hard to not compare yourself to other Others who have more than you. Oh no, Jill has bought an even bigger bike. A more useful way is to compare yourself to yourself. To look at how far you have come, what you have accomplished and how you have grown. It may not sound like much fun, but in the long run, it brings a lot more inner stillness, personal power and positive feelings. 
80% of what you fear will happen never really comes into reality. Let me read that again. 80% of what you fear will happen never actually really comes into reality. Most things you fear will happen never happen. They are just monsters in your own mind. If they happen, then they will most often not be as painful or as bad as you expected. Worrying is most often just a waste of time, precious time. This is of course easy to say, but if you remind yourself how little of what you fear throughout your life that has actually happened, you can start to re re release more and more of that worry from your thoughts right now. Don't take things too seriously. It's very easy to get wrapped up in things. But most of the things you worry about never come into reality. We just discussed that. And what may seem like a big problem right now, may, you may not even remember that in three years from now. Taking yourself, your thoughts and your emotions too seriously often just seems to lead to more unnecessary suffering. So relax a little more. Lighten up. It can do wonders for your mood and as an extension of that to your life. Write everything down. If your memory is anything like mine, then it's like a leaking bucket. Many of your good thoughts or great ideas may be lost forever if you don't make a habit of writing things down. There are opportunities in just about every experience. In pretty much any experience, there are always things that you can learn from it and things within the experience that can help you grow. I bet negative experiences, mistakes and failures can sometimes be even better than a success because it teaches you something totally new, something that another success could never have taught you. Whenever you have a negative experience, ask yourself, where is the opportunity in this? What is good about this situation? One negative experience can, with time, help you create many more positive experiences. Thank you so much. You can see many more such videos on myelesson.org.